Welcome back to Crash Courses. And if you're watching this video, you're about to do a dive penetrant inspection. But first, please like and subscribe to the channel and visit us on Patreon. So just like all our other videos, this is a job I've done many times before, but however, I have realized that I can be a little bit wordy, so we'll try not to be so boring. We'll try to get right to the point. We'll try to get rid of all the words, maybe, just maybe a little bit too more clean for a minute. Nando! What? You were having the dream again, weren't you? No, no, no. Yeah. So we're gonna start off first here with the dive penetrant inspection. Uh, but before we get into that, let's talk about an important term called capillary attraction. Capillary attraction just means the process of a liquid flowing in a narrow space without the assistance or even the opposition to any external forces like gravity. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna use our cleaner, all right? Then we're gonna use our penetrant, that's our liquid penetrant that's gonna penetrate inside that crack or defect wherever it's located. And then finally, the developer is gonna pull that penetrant out through capillary attraction. And as always, we'll provide the steps needed to complete the inspection. Step one, Fernando. Apply the cleaner. Step two. Wipe and dry. Step three. Apply the penetrant. Step four. Wipe and dry. Step five. Apply the developer. And then finally, you're gonna evaluate and record your interpretation. And that's it. So the first thing we're gonna do, <coughs> we're gonna spray our rag with cleaner. We're gonna clean our part. A few moments later. One eternity later. Okay, so we're gonna start wiping it clean. We wanna remove all of the penetrant. Now that our penetrant is removed, we're gonna apply the developer. And remember, the developer is what's gonna pull out the penetrant to give us our indication. All right, and our developer is now dried. If we take a look, over here it looks like I found a slight crack over here at the base, which is mostly where we see an indication of damage or a crack. All right, that red line right there shows some damage. <clears throat> and it looks like yours, absolutely, we've got a crack right here. If we take a close look, we can see right there at the base also, you have a crack, my friend. The fact, send it back. So we're gonna show you how to do a magnetic particle inspection. Jim, you wanna explain how we do a magnetic particle NDT? Yes, magnetic particle inspection is a process of finding a subsurface or surface flaw close to the surface. Um, by magnetizing the part in an AC coil, uh, there's different types. There's a, a continuous AC coil and a residual AC coil. Continuous is where you introduce the part into the AC coil and leave it there while you're testing it. And the residual is where you magnetize the part, remove it from the AC coil, and then test it on the side. So we're going to be doing the residual. You ready? Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, so right here we have an AC coil. Uh, it's already in current, and what we do here is we can magnetize the part. Again, the part has to have to be a ferrous part. It has to contain iron. When you put it inside the machine, you'll feel a slight resistance and vibration if it has iron in it. If it's aluminum or something without iron, it will not do anything. You will not feel it. So basically what we do, we put the part in the machine, we turn it on. You'll feel the vibration, you can feel the resistance as you move it around. Leave it in there for a bit, turn the machine off, and then they test it. we test it with a field indicator, and you should see a deflection on the field indicator, telling us this part is magnetized. So again, the part, our part has been thoroughly cleaned, it has been magnetized in the AC coil. We're gonna spray our treatment on it. We suspect the crack is under the head of the bolt, so that's been pretty much all we need to check. Put a liberal amount of the spray on it. So once we spray, we hit it with our UV light. We're gonna to need to turn the light out so it exposes any defect in the actual bolt. So let's go ahead and turn our lights off. Let's grab our bolt. That's not the bolt, Tad. Oops, I'm sorry.
halfway around this bolt, right where the washer face is. So we're determining that is indeed a crack. So Jim, thanks again. And for the record, I've always said that you are the second best safety wire instructor at our school. Um, a title which I have graciously bestowed onto you with a very prestigious and elegant award. Well, thank you for that compliment because I am the first <laughs> and the second best safety wire in the school. <laughs> and my certificate that I had for first place was removed and replaced with a second place. An award so, that still thank you very much. An award that still hangs in your office, and I, I think that award says it all. <laughs> Alright, are you ready for some NDT questions? Sure. Fire away. Here we go. So the last thing I want to do, I thought we could have some fun. We could do a little lightning round of questions that some of the students might get questions on their project. So are you ready? We're ready. Here we go. All right. So a dye penetrant inspection are based on the principle of what? A, capillary action. B, magnetic flux fields. C, electrostatic forces. Or D, exposure to liquids. A, capillary action. Very good. So Correct. Good. Got them. All right. Okay. Ready for your next one? Always. Dye penetrant inspections should not be performed on what? A. Aluminum parts. B. Non-ferrous metals. C. Oxygen-related equipment. Or D. Non-metallic metals. Oxygen. Very good. And you want to explain that? Break that down. Oh yeah, you're, you're trying to put petroleum on, yeah, so on please, oxygen. If you take part. anything from this video, you do not ever want to service oxygen with any type of oil or residue on your hands when you're servicing. Okay, very important. Bad things will happen. All right, good job. You're doing good. All right, two for two here. Demagnetization is required after which inspection? A. Dye penetrant. B. Magnetic particle inspection. C. Ultrasonic. D. Visual inspection. Magnetic. Very good, correct. Yeah. <clears throat> AMP on the works, bro. I'm telling you. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> next one. The time that the penetrant remains on the surface of a part is known as A, the dwell time, B, the active time, C, pizza time, or D, hammer time. A. Dwell time. Very good, yeah. you got it, correct. Which NDT inspection can't be used on aluminum parts? Is it A, a visual inspection, B, a dye penetrant inspection, C, ultrasonic inspection, or D, magnetic particle inspection? Ultrasonic. And wrong. <clears throat> you cannot use a magnetic particle inspection on aluminum parts because the aluminum parts... Say the question there. again. Which NDT inspection can't be used on aluminum parts? Can't. 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 See, that's the accent. <laughs> that's the accent. I'm trying to tell you. All right. So we'll 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 pretend that one didn't happen. Okay. So what was it? So magnetic particle inspection. Magnetic. So it you cannot out. you cannot use aluminum parts with a magnetic particle inspection because the metals are ferrous. I will if you have say it cannot cannot. Be, cannot. cannot. So it's my. He, he, he just can't. <laughs> All right. So our next one. This one's a, this one's an open ended one. Okay. Not A, B, or C. It's open ended. So let's see if you can figure it out. I think you can. Get it. What caution should be taken when cleaning a part to remove the penetrant? You do not want to spray the penetrant out of the defect? That's correct. <clears throat> All right, man, you're doing great. Fluorescent dye is used to locate what? A, internal damage, B, surface cracks, C, magnetic flux fields, or D, metal energy. That was B. It was, surface cracks, very good, surface correct. Cracks. Special inspections with flashlights, long flexible extensions, and mirrors are used during what type of inspection? Visual inspection. Very good, correct. Now this one's a trick one, so pay attention to the wording here, okay? <clears throat> what is the best developer for a magnetic particle inspection? Is it A, a dry developer, B, wet developer, C, ultrasonic developer, or D, none of the above? For a man magnetic, that is uh, none of the above. None of the above, correct. He's got it. <clears throat> Very good. Now, how did you remember that one? I'm surprised. Uh -huh. So the trick was that is that when you use the magnetic particle inspection, okay, there's no developer. There you is just no spray developer on the ferrous particles, okay, and that's it. Okay, so no developer. 
Our last one, let's see if he's got it, okay? Which of the following is not a developer used with a liquid penetrant inspection? Is it A, wet, B, dry, C, continuous, or D, non-aqueous? B. <coughs> Wrong. Hey. <coughs> continuous. Continuous. So you have, you have wet, you have dry, and non-aqueous. Okay. But not bad, not bad, pretty good, pretty good. Not bad, like a 70? A lot better, a lot better, a lot better than I thought you were going to do there. Yeah. So when was the last time you remember seeing those questions? Long time ago, huh? Six years ago. <laughs> well, you did good. Good job. I'm proud of you, as always. I think now's a good time to wrap it up. Also, don't forget about our lesson today. Remember the point of why we did what we did, the dive penetrant inspection. We want to make sure we find any cracks or damage that could be there. So, any questions you or the audience might have out there? Yes. I've been wondering. What our main station looks like a carpenter shop? Shh.